Hello everyone, my name is Flavio Pereira, I'm part of the Technical Enablement Team, and today we're going to cover the Storage Level 200 lesson. Uh, on the first uh, lesson, I talked about uh, NVMe um, devices, and then um, here we're going to cover the block storage uh, side. So I'm going to give you a couple of um, overview of block storage, some of the features and capabilities of that, and some numbers around performance uh, for block storage too. So just to give a quick overview, um, block storage is the storage that you can attach to uh, any compute instance that was launched uh, in OCI. So if you need extra space, if you need extra uh, storage, you can just uh, create a block volume and then attach that over to your instance. Okay. So this is uh, actually um, a storage that can hold, you know, applications, uh, installations, or even binary. Um, um, of softwares uh, on it, so it's a it, it can go big. You can go from 50 gigabytes all the way to 32 terabytes of storage uh, on your on your device. So you can support up to 32 volumes on each instance. So you can go all the way up to one petabyte of storage uh, if you want um, associated to uh, your um, your. VM. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, there's a few things that was covered in a hundred lesson, like schedule backups. You can do backup of the block volume. You can do also cross region uh, uh, copy. You can copy one block from one region to another one. Uh, if you're creating a disaster recovery scenario, or AHA uh, scenario as well, so you can have those copies over uh, across regions. Um, we're really proud of the performance on the block storage. I'm going to cover that in a few uh, details um, on, a, on a few slides. Um, so we'll be able to see the, the numbers and how we can get some uh, performance metrics around the block storage as well. Okay, so one quick thing I want to um, touch here is some of the features around block storage. And the first one is the volume group. Uh, so volume group is a great feature inside of the block storage. Uh, so you can combine multiple volumes uh, in order to take backups or clone of those of those volumes. So imagine a situation where you have uh, your application with multiple uh, block volumes associated to it, and then you have to create a backup uh, of those volumes. So by the time you get to the fifth uh, blo block, um, the first block was already updated with new content, new uh, information, and then you lost track of that backup. So if you restore all those five volumes um, on, your, on your environment, probably one of the volumes will be out of sync. So you don't have all the data uh, capture uh, when you executed the, the backup. So the idea of volume group is to uh, resolve that problem, right? So you can have multiple um, volume is associated to actually multiple instances. You have all instances uh, up and running of your workload. Let's say you have a ERP application with a middle tier database and a web uh, application in front and you have multiple volumes uh, associated to, uh, to that environment. You can just combine all those block volumes uh, in one single uh, volume and then just take a backup of it, right? You can also include the, bo the boot volume too uh, of that. So you have a consistent uh, backup across all the data that's actually stored inside of your, your VM. So from the boot volume and from the block volume is associated to that. Um, you can do volume groups for coordinated backups. Uh, then you can take a copy or a backup of this volume group and just restore that in a different availability domain uh, for replicated environment. So if you want to create a um, Test dev scenario, you can do that as well. If you just want to uh, copy that data from one AD to another one, you can do, you can do this uh, volume group coordinated backup. So again, just take a backup of all the volumes and just restore that uh, on a different availability domain uh, if you need it. You can also do clone, right? So same features you have for the regular block storage, you can do um, clone too. You can clone um, the entire volume group um, replicated environments and it's really fast, right? So you can have all these environments replicated uh, for you to create a, a new scenario. So fairly easy to, to achieve that uh, in replicated environment. All right, in terms of the block volume performance, uh, you can also find um, the performance around IOPS, throughput, and latency. So those are the three aspects of the, the performance that is going to be measured against uh, the block volume. Uh, so the block volume scales uh, linearly 
per gigabyte uh, only storage. So that means uh, if you increase the size of your storage, you're gonna get better performance. So that's the way it is. So if you, if you deploy a 50 gigabyte storage, you're not gonna get the same performance if you're using um, a one terabyte uh, volume. So one terabyte volume will give you more performance than the, the 50 gigabyte volume. So just keep that in mind. Throughput, it's also part of the performance metrics, but throughput, it's actually tied to the VM uh, shape. So depends on the shape you deploying. Uh, that's going to give you the network throughput uh, of the, the the network, right? And then that's going to that's going to impact the um, the storage uh, as well. So keep in mind uh, of that. And then when you deploy um, compute VM shape, make sure you're picking the right um, needed, the right size for your application, the right size for your performance. Uh, you have to select the shape that will meet the requirements for you. Uh, the IOPS is actually independent of the instance shape or type. Uh, IOPS you can measure on any type of a VM shape that you open running, uh, and that's going to give you the the performance um, that we we covered under the SLA for you. Okay, uh, on, when you attach a block volume to um, to an instance, there's two types of, of um, attachment you can do. You can do iSCSI or you can do power virtualized. Right. So iSCSI usually is the, get the better performance, uh, especially when using Barometer Server. Uh, you're gonna get the better performance there, and you can use power virtualized. Uh, attachment too. So, uh, power virtualized give you flexibility in terms of the device, how the device will be presented to the operating system. There's a couple of things uh, you can take advantage, like the device path name uh, that you can select and use uh, will be automatically showing up there. If you're using iSCSI, you do have to execute the iSCSI commands inside of the operating operating system to get access to the device. Okay. Uh, here's just a table that just give you a few numbers around throughput and IOPS and it depends on the block size that was tested um, um, uh, the performance so you can see the numbers just to give an idea of how you, how much uh, IOPS and, and throughput you can get on the block volume okay uh, this is this is actually showing some uh, commands that you can execute it on your block volume to measure your perform to measure the performance. Uh, so if you're using the fio command and I use the fio command against the NVMe device, you can do the same on the block storage. Uh, you can measure read only read write or read write operations uh, and and measure and see how many IOPS you can get on on each device. We highly recommend it to do it uh, so you can validate some of the tests and do some benchmarking around uh, around the block volume associated to your to your VM. Okay. Uh, more in terms of performance, like how we can get more information on it, there's a few links here. Um, the documentation give you some of the guidance for uh, you do some benchmarks as well. Uh, there's blogs that talks about the, the block volume performance and some third party uh, reviews around block storage performance too. So uh, people are uh, checking our our block volume, doing some benchmarks and, and, and present the results so you can get more information and see how it can benefit from uh, from the, the performance around the block storage. Uh, just a warning here, if you're doing some field commands that on benchmark, uh, just be careful when you execute those. Uh, if you don't execute in a way or using the wrong parameters, uh, you might just delete the data inside of the disk. So just be careful with that. We highly recommend you do the field when you don't have any data. Uh, when you just attach the volume and you want to just do a quick benchmark to see the performance, um, highly recommended to do that without any data. So then it will, it will be safe to, to execute this command. All right, so let me do a demo. Let's just show you how to attach block volume to the, to the VM, uh, how we can access. I'm going to run some field commands to you so we can get uh, information on terms of performance. Uh, and yeah, I'll show you how to, how to do that. All right, so here, here I'm, I am on the OCI dashboard on the compute instance page. And I, I, have, I was provisioned on the dense VM, uh, VM dense shape uh, here. And I'm going to attach a block volume to that shape so you can see, you can see how that works. Uh, so it was provisioned on uh, AD3 on Phoenix uh, region. So in order to create a block volume, I go to the menu block storage. And then I'm going to go and create a block volume here. Uh, on the block volume, I will create um, data um, volume. 
on availability domain three, which is where my instance are uh, it's running. Uh, I'm going to use one terabyte uh, of that. I'm not going to select any backup policy, but I can if I want um, select one of the the three options for backup policy. Uh, the encryption um, I use uh, I'm going to use the encrypted using Oracle manage uh, manage keys, but if you want to use your encryption uh, keys, you can do that too. Uh, you can uh, select that one and select the vault uh, of your encrypted keys and just select the keys here so the volume will be encrypted using your own key, okay? Uh, yeah, let's just create a create a volume. Oh, the name is required, it's data. Uh, let's go here and create that volume. Uh, that's going to be provision and here you can see the matrix. Um, on the block volume page, uh, you can also see the volume read throughput of your um, of your of your block, uh, the read and write throughput and operations too, read and write operations of the of the data. So that's give you give you a plenty information of what's happening inside of the inside of the block volume. You want to start putting some load and writing files and delete files and doing read and write operations uh, on it. Okay, so from the block volume page, I can just go and attach an instance um, to that block, right? I can just say I want to I want to attach the block volume to a specific instance, and one once I do that, like I mentioned on the presentation, you have two types. You can do iSCSI or power virtualized. Uh, you can do some read write uh, operation or read only, uh, and there's one feature that's coming up which is the read write uh, shareable uh, as well. Uh, so we're going to use the read write uh, one and I'm going to select the instance with the VM dense IO uh, and a device name. So I can pick a device name that I want to use it. Um, for example, I can just use dev Oracle CI Oracle VDB. So that way, every time I rebooted the server, I rebooted that instance, uh, this device name will be persistent. All right, so I'll be able to always use that device name once I rebooted the server. Okay, I'm gonna use the iSCSI one uh, and I'll click attach. When I click attach, I got this message saying that if I wanna add this iSCSI block volume that I just created and attach uh, to, through um, on my instance and make sure that, that I'll have access to that iSCSI volume when I rebooted the server. Uh, I can have I, I can enter the information on the ETCFS tab and make sure I add those options, the net dev and no fail option. So in case there's some problems uh, reaching out the device, the machine will, will boot normally, right? Even if I don't have access to the block volume later on. Okay. So with that, I can see that's attached uh, to my device. So let's just go here on the action and just open up the iSCSI commands information. I'm going to copy the iSCSI ice commands because I have to execute those commands inside of my, um, my instance. So I'm just copy that uh, and let's go and access, access my instance. So if you go back here and I actually have this um, up and running already. So this is my, my VM. If I do cat proc partitions I don't see uh, my my extra block volume associated to that as yet so if I do LSBLK I also don't see this information so let me just um, execute the iSCSI commands uh, and now if I do LSBLK I can see the SDB device associated one terabyte uh, disk associated to that okay um, yeah, so the device name path that I decided for this, if I go back to the attach block volume, uh, it's dev Oracle CI Oracle VDB. So if I copy that and go back here, I can uh, check that I have this device uh, enabled as well. So from here, it's easy. I can just create a directory, uh, for example, and I can format that, uh, that device. I can do a MKFS. Um, for example, XFS and Dev Oracle CI Oracle VDB, and just format the device on XFS, and I can mount that device uh, as well. So if I do mount Dev Oracle OCI Oracle VDB, 
data and then now I have one terabyte of volume um, mounted inside of my operating system okay so this is one way to do it uh, I can also do the field command just to test the performance so if I have to uh, do that let's just do here real quick and find the field command that was executed for the NVMe but now we're gonna do that for uh, slash dev sdb which is which is the 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 device the block volume that was associated to the to the machine so if i if i run that command um oh it says mounted so i need to unmount that so let me just do that real quick uh unmount data and i can execute it again and now i'm going to start uh executing the process and collecting the information around IOP. So I put one terabyte of um, of block storage. Let's see uh, the IOPS, how many IOPS I'm going to get on one terabyte data. So just give you a few uh, minutes here so we'll, I'll show you the results. All right, so it finished um, the test. So if we check the IOPS here, uh, we can see that it was around 25, 29k IOPS um, on on a disk on the right. So, yeah. So this is really close to the SLA that we are. Uh, it's actually under the SLA that we are we're providing. The SLA says 25k IOPS um, for one terabyte uh, block volume. So, yeah, you got the the performance that um, that we got the performance that we're expecting to it. Okay, so yeah, this is the, the demo. I hope you like it. Thanks for watching.